what's up this is Hector from Nazi Nerdy Collection and today I want to talk about a brand new TCG Kickstarter it's been out for about a couple weeks now but it's doing extremely well it's over two million dollars already it's just doing a great job I was watching Alpha Investments if you guys never seen that channel before on YouTube definitely go check it out and Rudy in the video mentioned that this is the next big TCG it's already reached 2.3 million dollars it has over 3700 backers and there's still 11 days to go if you guys don't know it's about kickstarter when they already surpassed their goal that final week is where they really make money so if there's a lot of people that already caught on to it now i would guess that it's gonna jump up it might even reach 3 million or more by the time that last week is up so it's interesting to see where it ends up as the game is called sorcery contested realm I already decided to get the booster box, I decided to get the four pre-constructed decks, and I also decided to get the two-player playmat. If you look at the artwork itself, it literally looks amazing. Pretty much like what Rudy said, it reminds me of Magic when it first came out. And the reason why it looks so detailed is because these are actually hand-painted. This is something they don't really do anymore, and you can really tell the difference. And I noticed something about this team. They seem to be showcasing a bunch of different artists. So the first one I actually picked up was the Elementalist, which is $50 for US. And it's four pre-constructed decks. So I figured that I'm more than likely going to keep the Kickstarter booster box sealed. As you can tell behind me, I, I usually keep sealed stuff, but I do like to play TCG as well. And if it's a new TCG, I would love to try it and test it out, especially on this channel. I plan on doing that as well. So I figured the best way to go was to get a booster box and also something that I can actually play. So this is a pretty fair four decks, $50. It's not too bad. As long as it's playable and it's for Kickstarter, it's not too bad at all. The next thing is Apprentice and that's $130. This is what I also purchased, which is the booster box. And it's not the priciest booster box. It's more along the lines of Pokemon right now, because that's around Pokemon's price. If you get Pokemon for Pokemon Center, it's $140. If you get Pokemon from local game shops, you can probably spend $120 or $110 on them. So it's around the same price for that, which is cool. $750 bundle, which you get like a booster box case, which is six booster boxes. The next one is $2,500 tier. It has two cases, it has one random original artwork, which is really cool too. Then you have two sample packs, four uncut print sheets. That's something that you don't see too often. It looks like this TCG is focused on people playing the game and not as much for people collecting. So I thought that was pretty cool. I would have loved to gone for that, but there's no way I would spend $2,500 on any of this stuff because obviously I'm married and I would be killed and be unmarried as soon as I paid at $2,500. <laughs> so that's never going to happen. The next tier was $2,750. That one was pretty cool as well. Four cases, the four element pre-constructed decks, four two-player play mats, and two promotional posters, 24 exclusive prize cards. You have to be a store owner to get this. I think that's huge because there's a lot of these new TCG companies that are just giving a whole bunch of things to people and they're just becoming stores overnight. And I think it's important that they're actually selling it to real stores. You have to show proof that you have a store because the point of a Kickstarter like this is to get people to play this game. And since this game is focused on people to play this game, it's important to get it to the people's hands and not for people to resell it online. But if you look down here, you actually see the artwork so I thought that's pretty cool. They show you the different artwork that you could get. The stretch goals that they reached, they were at $400,000, they went to $600,000, and it seems like they're given so much stuff. Like they added the box topper, they added security measures, which obviously was gonna be added eventually anyway. They added a full art back for each foil front cards. They added specialty cards and, and specialty sets. I even think this one's pretty cool which is uh, the quarter size tokens. Another cool thing that they did add for this, they added a tabletop simulator to this game. So you could go ahead and download that on Steam. They also have the rule book itself. You can see exactly how to play, how to place cards, and they go over everything. Don't expect this game to be a game that keeps coming out with sets every couple months. They're gonna just judge to see if people are gonna play this competitively or not play it competitively. If you're only going to do this once a year, 
where you release a set. I don't know if that's going to work out too well because if your goal is to attract people that play the game, people that play the game want something new every couple of months. They don't have the attention span to wait that long. If they wait a full year, it may be too late. By then people may forget the game and by the time it relaunches, you may get half of the customer base that you got originally. Maybe they'll come out with, let's say, expansion packs and they expand to the original set, but it's not officially a new set. I, I don't know. One of the co-creators of Path of Exile is one of the people that are helping with this game. Path of Exile, if you guys don't know the video game, it's a pretty good video game. So hopefully with that experience, it's going to help out this TCG. This is Hector from Nazi Nerdy Collection. Hopefully you enjoy this video. See you.